This part was odd. Like you're gonna have to do that again. There's no way that's. Yeah. Jesus, we got fucking jets, elevators, babies crying. <coughs> Hello, and welcome to Filling in the Gaps. I'm Justin. And I'm Darren Aronofsky. You are not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Please tell me that's not the only reason you wanted to do this episode. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. Okay. We, do, we, we do share a name, and he's the only, this is the only person I know in the world that actually has my name. I don't know any other Darrens in the world. Do you? <laughs> I mean, do you? Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> so, here we are. Uh, talking today about not a game, but a movie, a puzzling movie, a very, very puzzling movie called Mother! Exclamation mark. Mother! Thank you. <laughs> Clearly one of us has energy today. One of us does not. <laughs> and I just woke up. Well, maybe we need to record with you just waking up all the time. <laughs> Mother is from 2017. It is directed by... Not my co-host, but the actual Darren Aronofsky, known for things like Pi, Requiem for a Dream, Noah. I haven't seen Noah. I haven't no, either, I, I, but I... And I'm not gonna... <laughs> I have no desire to. Was that a pun there? No. Did you just say, I have no desire to? If I did, it's just because I'm tired. <laughs> Black Swan, or the better version of Black Swan, The Wrestler. Yeah, I haven't seen either of those. Oh, see, I was waiting for you to come to the defense of no the black swan is so much better uh it's virtually the same story it's just done in a very different way i think the wrestler is a better movie to be honest but that's just me yeah i've only seen pi the fountain requiem for a dream um a couple of others and i pretty much have only seen pi which i thought was interesting different a bit off the rails but as a first feature film i thought not bad the wrestler black swan and now this one those are the only ones i've seen so i skipped unfortunately requiem for a dream which is the one that a lot of people have said is quite good well they just talk about it because it's got some really dark moments in it it's, it's it, requiem for dream is almost like a meme requiem for a meme okay mm. this movie bit of mixed feelings as far as the critics go like even let's see our imdb is 6.6 .6, metacritic is 75 Rotten Tomato, the critics are at 69%. The audience people, 58 Yeah, it's almost a 50-50 for this. So it's like, and then, so it, it, make, it would make sense if you didn't like it, and I did, because it seems like that's the way that it goes across the board. You either like this movie or you hate it. I suppose so. Uh, which sense, how do you feel about this movie? I love this movie. Great, I get to hate it. So, <laughs> I really don't like this movie. You thought that perhaps a second watch would make me turn around, but it's actually made it worse. That's odd, because I watched it last night to take notes, and I really enjoyed my... This is my third watch of it, and I liked it even more. It just keeps on getting better and better for me. <laughs> for me, it gets worse and worse. And I think part of that is at least the first time in an Aronofsky film like this you're never quite sure what's going to happen or where things are going to go or how crazy they're going to get and so at least the first time things just got more and more wild and i didn't know what was going to happen the second time i knew exactly what was going to happen so now i don't even have that joy there's no joy of surprise anymore so no this is a paramount movie it was fairly big budget for what it is i think it is two hours and one minute and uh if you look it up on IMDb, the character names are kind of rubbish. Him. And mother. Mother. mother man, man. Woman. Cupbearer. Harold. Yeah. So I'm typically going to just be referring to them by their actor names. I think I have as well. Or I, I didn't write. You always do that. You always go to the credits and find the names. And I should do that because that makes sense. But I've like got Ed Harris's wife. And uh, like... I mean, I should just call her Michelle, right. yeah? But, well, that's, um, that's why. Like, <laughs> she's not a mystery person. <laughs> she's somebody you would know. Um, but yeah, so um, I'll, I'll try and, I'll try and uh, stick to your kind of way, or you can correct me as we go through. Why is it called Mother with an exclamation mark? I figured you would save that for the end as some sort of big... No, 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 no. no. I don't know. but Because I... have you seen Mother? The other Mother? There are so many movies with Mother in the title. Are you talking about the Albert Brooks one? Yeah. Oh yeah, I love that one. That's great. That's that's a lot of cheese. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you remember that. I don't remember. It. It's been so long since I've seen it, but they just work so well together. It's a great movie, man. That is the movie I would recommend. Mother is 
just really funny. It's really kind of heartwarming, but not in an overly sappy way, at least if I remember correctly. There's a lot of nagging and annoyance between the two characters that it just works really well and it's so I funny. love Albert Brooks man he's he's great but anyway we're not here to talk about Albert Brooks we're here to talk no about unfortunately him. because that movie makes sense so here <laughs> we are it's just not, it's not to puzzling explain this one yeah <laughs> just in time for Mother's Day everybody else has probably already done this the year before this and the year before this and here we are as usual coming late to the game but <laughs> happy Mother's Day we get to talk about this well, what Darren would say is a wonderful movie. Masterpiece. I would say is... I, I, I don't even have words for it. <laughs> Are you ready to jump into it? Yep. All right. Spoiler warning. We're going to get right into it. So if you want to go see Mother 2017 with the exclamation mark before we spoil it for you, do it now. Woo! The exclamation mark. I It just feels pretentious to me. I don't know why it needs to be there. I've got no idea. Unless it's to somehow differentiate it between that and the Albert Brooks movie. But <laughs> yeah, somehow you, I doubt have that. Have you seen Mother? Yeah, it was hilarious. I love, I love that part when, you know, when he goes into the freezer and pulls out that massive block of cheese. Um, what? No, no, no. I'm talking about the bit where, like, the war starts in the house. Like, oh, oh we've been watching this thing. We've been watching a different movie. Um, yeah, I've got no idea. No idea. What I did notice is what, what's weird is that and I, I was going to mention this at the end, because it does come at the end, is everybody's names are in small, in lowercase, like, throughout the whole movie, when you see their, their names on the screen. So everything is written in lowercase. So it's almost like... What are you talking about, their names on the screen? Like, like in, in the credits. Everyone's name is lowercase. Oh, okay. There, there are no capital letters. Yeah, you're expecting me to stick around for the credits for this one. <laughs> well, I read somewhere... Or I saw in an interview that Aronofsky said, someone asked him, like, why is there an exclamation mark? He's like, oh, the hint for that is in the credits. And I guess that's what it is. It's like everyone is everyone is nothing, I think. And so, or everyone is equal, at least. And so Mother doesn't get a capital letter, but she gets an exclamation point um, because she's not God or she's not the God. So I guess only God gets the, the capital letter. Okay. We need to talk about this before we ever get going. You love this movie. I'm happy to let you run this show. But how do you want to do it? There's a problem of, I think you're going to have about 4,000 theories you want to throw out about this movie. Oh, just one. Just one. Just one? Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe two. But I, I, I'd be happy to go through it in chronological order. Right. For what it is. Okay. Well, I mean, But the thing is, if you're going to keep interrupting me with like tons of like theory... Well, that's the thing. I did, I wrote, basically, because I've already seen the movie, I tried to watch it again last night as a person who had never seen the movie. So I'd probably save all my crazy stuff until the end. And that makes okay. sense. So we go through it quickly. Yep. And then we get into your theories. Crazy stuff at the end. Okay. So before we get to your crazy theories, my suggestion would be we push through quick. Yeah, because this could be long. <laughs> mm. We push through this part quick. Uh -huh. Only mention things you think are important. Mm hmm but not necessarily to your theory. Mm -hmm. I will say my kind of maybe four or five reasons why I dislike the movie, and then I will leave you to go crazy with your theories. That's dangerous, man. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to leave and let you have free reign of the microphone. But I'm saying I get my stuff out of the way. Yep. My like nitpicky, annoying stuff, and then I let you be happy at the end. Sounds good. Okay. It begins with a burning woman. I don't know who this woman is. Yeah. You see the title. I believe the title comes up and then the exclamation mark comes up. I am more annoyed by this exclamation mark than I should be. <laughs> I think the problem is I don't really like the movie. I think if I liked it, then I wouldn't mind. But now I'm just finding any reason to not. There are dirty hands that replace a kind of crystal or piece of glass onto the stand. Javier, mm -hmm. who is known as him. <laughs> yep. Javier smiles. So Javier Bardem, who I like in a lot of other things, and he's fine in this one, but it's just the movie I feel lets it down. The world de-burns from the crystal at its center, and a body forms, and now we have Jennifer Lawrence. She yep. wakes up, baby, baby, where are you looking for a husband? Walks all around, steps outside, stupid jump scare as he comes up behind her, and says he was outside, but it makes no sense to me. I know he was outside, but he's coming from inside the house. 
So why would she assume he was outside? Did you notice that, or is it just I, me? I, I, I didn't notice that, to be honest. Did she say that? I mean, I, I can understand it now. Because she's on the outside looking in, and he jump-scared her from behind her. Right. So why did she assume he was outside? I don't get that. Be out of, outside of his office where he should be writing. <laughs> he says he's outside to get the ideas flowing, so we get the idea very quickly. He's a writer, mm -hmm. but clearly is stuck of some in some way. Apparently, it didn't help. He says he stinks as well, so he decides to go take a shower. Um, we then have to watch Jennifer Lawrence. I don't know, is she painting or is she spackling the wall? She doesn't like the color, so she adds this yellow. This yellow obviously is meant to be something because we see this color a, lot. a few times. Yeah. She also starts to imagine that the wall has a heartbeat. That's when she adds the color is when she notices the heart in the wall. They eat breakfast and then it's like night and she's sitting by a fire as he doesn't write. Knock on the door. Welcome Ed Harris. He says he doesn't want to be a bother. At this point, I laugh in my notes because this is the beginning of everything. So <laughs> he says he doesn't want to be a bother, but clearly he is going to be a bother. Yeah, I mean, and and Ed Harris's um, character is interesting because he's like he's so he's so I don't know he's not he's not rude, but he's so thoughtless. Like he's such an idiot and like just a pain in the butt character. Like she's like, oh no, you know. We don't we don't smoke, and he's like, "Oh, that's good." Like, <laughs> no, 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 we don't smoke in the house. Get out, you know. Javier says, "My wife, it, like, it's okay, it's okay. My wife loves company, which clearly is not no, the case. She does not love she company. She hates company." There's a random part here where Jennifer Lawrence feels her stomach. She's in pain. She drops the mug, but we don't really know why or what's going on there. Ed goes on to leave, but Javier asks him to stay. No, 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 please stay. Uh, yeah, and she's obviously not happy about that at all. Right. We find out very quickly that uh, Ed Harris is a fan of Javier's writing. The one thing he won't let him do is touch the crystal. He says it was a special gift. And then there's this whole backstory about, I lost all in the fire until I saw the crystal. It gave me strength and gave me the ability to write again. And that's how he met Jennifer Lawrence, or it's at that point that he met her. I don't know. It doesn't really matter because clearly part of that is probably going to be true in your theory and part of it is a blatant lie. Javier makes a big deal about saying how his wife has done all the remodeling in the house mm -hmm. and how much work it was, but the house still looks kind of a shambles. No, I mean, you try fixing up a house on your own. But... It's getting there. Is it? It's livable and... We don't know how much was actually done before. Like, was it actually burned down as we saw it in the beginning? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's what he does. That's what, that was his whole story. The whole place was burned down in a fire. So from being a burnt out shell to what it is now, yeah, I think for a one woman job, that's pretty good going. I definitely couldn't do that. I guess. <laughs> We're going to get to the sink, though. Oh, we will get to the sink. I love the sink. Okay. The sink is very important. Okay. Yeah, so Ed Hare, uh, he's coughing a lot. Later, we see him puking. There's a scar on his back. Uh, Javier covers it up so his wife can't see. She feels bad, and so she drinks some yellow powder. She's going to do that a lot. Uh, it does seem to be the same color as the spackle or whatever she was putting onto the walls earlier. Okay, so we go back to them again. She's cooking breakfast. Javier says it's nice to talk to someone that loves his work. She says, so do I. That doesn't really seem to affect him. She starts to nag about having this visitor while he's using the toilet in a time where he probably can't be listening anyway. The bell rings. Welcome Ed Harris's wife in the movie, Michelle Pfeiffer, who's come to stay. Yeah, and, and, and make out really uncomfortably on the porch while we all watch. Yeah, I put that in here as well. <laughs> Breakfast is burning. An alarm is ringing. She runs in, burns her hand. Pfeiffer runs in and also burns her hand stupidly, but that also drops the pan, so now they don't get to have breakfast, or she has to make more, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the two, they kind of make out some more, they talk about their boys, Javier invites them to stay as long as they want, which is clearly not what his wife wants, Jennifer Lawrence is painting again, Michelle Pfeiffer brings in hard lemonade, says it's a family recipe, she's dubious that Jennifer Lawrence has no painkillers, 
She's like, I've got a headache or something. Please give me painkillers. Mm. And she said, I don't have any. She's like, what? Are you lying to me? Yeah, it's weird. So then they go on a tour of the house, talking about how the home has been rebuilt. It's his house. Pfeiffer keeps saying over and over, well, I guess that shows that you love him. Um, she's pushing them to have kids. Like, just really inappropriate conversation. Yeah, yeah. She tries to get into the study, and that's the one room she's not supposed to be in. And this just becomes a constant issue, that study and the crystal. The boys, by this point, meaning Javier and Ed Harris, take off for a hike. Pfeiffer needs to do laundry, so she comes down. She insults her <laughs> her underwear like, <laughs> <laughs> and says you need to have a more interesting sex life. In annoyance, much like a moment earlier when... Jennifer Lawrence was annoyed with Ed Harris and she threw his lighter behind a table or something. Yeah. She now takes this pair of underwear and throws it behind the washer. I'm sure it's symbolic, but it's absolutely stupid. I don't know. I wouldn't say it's absolutely stupid, but... This is her house. Yeah. She's basically throwing garbage behind stuff. Mm -hmm. In her own place. She's going to have to tidy up later because she is a bit of a, a house uh, freak. Yeah. That to me makes no sense. She's so obsessed with the house and having things orderly. And yet she's throwing this garbage behind stuff that she'll have to go back. Have you ever tried to move a washer to get something <laughs> from behind it? Uh, no, but I can imagine. So to me, it just seems stupid. It seems petty. It seems like the thing a child would do. She goes up. There's a huge mess from... <laughs> where the lemonade was made, there are bloody tissues by the sink in the bathroom, I assume from Ed Harris coughing into them, and she tries to flush them down the toilet, <laughs> and there's a squid in the toilet? Yeah. Something that squirts in. I was like, what the hell was that, man? Like some kind of weird octopus that makes like a wee sound. <laughs> she tries to like plunge it down the toilet, and then it shoots some ink. I honestly, I'm, I'm lost at that point. Like, um... I've got a lot of theories about other things in the movie, but this one, if you can help me out and put something in the comments, because I've got no idea about this part. Like, that was just weird. The boys come back from their hike. Ed coughs. I think he's sitting on the sink. This is the first time of many where she's going to say, the sink isn't braced. Please don't sit on it. They talk about, um, I think it's Jayla and Javier talking about the fact that Ed is dying and he wanted to meet this writer that Javier is portraying before Ed dies. They, meaning the other couple, Ed and Michelle Pfeiffer, they break the crystal because they go in the, the study when they're not supposed to. Javier gets mad. He collects the pieces and then crushes blood onto them, which apparently is a way to reform it. I think he's just angry. I don't, I, mean, I, I, I don't think that's, no, because it doesn't get reformed. That crystal is done. Like, he's just totally pissed off at that point. He's just, angry because that crystal will never reform so we see at the end he gets a new one but um yeah i think he's just really super angry i don't think i'd ever get angry enough to want to crush my hands onto broken glass well leonardo did it in django unchained so doesn't mean i won <laughs> <laughs> he still didn't win an oscar um but yeah what i find was really funny after this is like you know he's so angry he's been so kind this entire movie to these guests and he's super super angry now and then, what's the first thing they do? Oh, let's go and have sex. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence walks in and I'm like, having sex. It's like, what are you guys doing? You, you were told just to get out. Like, why, why are you having sex with the door open? Um, yeah, it was, that was kind of interesting. Jayla, uh, Jennifer Lawrence, sees the floor now turning to ash. This is going to be a repeating theme where she sees this burning before her or the heart itself will be burning the heart of the house i guess more yellow powder to drink which often follows these kind of episodes yeah it's like some, some kind of anxiety medicine or something like that javier breaks off the study doorknob he boards up the study he says they'll never get in there again there's a whole issue of i'll kick them out but will they go we're 40 minutes into the movie mm-hmm and for me, this is where the movie officially starts to go off the rails. Starts. Uh, because this is where Ed Harris and Michelle Pfeiffer, like their characters' sons, appear. And they get in a huge fight over Ed Harris's will. And let's just cut to the end. One kills the other. Yeah. They're real brothers in real life as well. 
Are they? Yeah. Well, they played this part very well. <laughs> it just came out of absolute nowhere and just was not what I wanted in this movie. It didn't make any sense to me that they would both come up together, that they would both make it to the house at the same time, and then come in and immediately start fighting like this. It doesn't make any sense to me logically, but clearly that no, doesn't really matter doesn't in this matter. movie. <laughs> but this is the problem for me. Until this point, the only really super odd thing we had seen was the squid. Right. And we could edit that out and not have it. And then we still have just this awkward, uncomfortable situation in a more or less real environment. Mm -hmm. If we could ignore the first burning and that weirdness. Once we leave that point, once we hit this point, this is where for me, now the movie leaves reality and where I really stop caring. So first time around, this is where I stopped caring. Second time around, this is the part I was dreading because I knew just from this point on, I lost interest. Most of my notes are just beat, beat, beat. This happened, this happened, this happened. Not a lot that I want to say, but... I mean, but that's that's, that's really interesting because this is the point in the movie that got interesting for me. For you, yeah. yeah. It's like we're on polar opposites here. and But that is interesting because... Yeah, this point. This is the point where I started to realize stuff and be like, "Oh, right, okay." Yeah, the beginning part is like, like you said, the beginning weirdness to any movie is like, "Okay, well, that's gonna come into play later." I don't understand that now. I'll just put that in this little bag and tie it up and throw it to the back um, and watch the movie. And yeah, when we get to this point, it's like th now the movie's beginning for me. Like, yeah, it's the it's kind of interesting. Yeah, there's a whole issue of we don't know where the killer is that bit is weird and that, that, that whole part is weird so, so basically yeah so the brother kills the other brother like smashes him in the head with the handle that um uh, he he broke off from the study and tossed away and um, the other brothers picked it up and smashes him over the head with it kills him and then the first thing that the husband says is get towels get you know she's covered <laughs> she's covered in blood he doesn't ask her hey are you okay and then all of a sudden he just like leaves with everyone and she and she's begging him like don't leave me alone. There's a killer, killer outside. Yeah. And we said this before when we when we talked about um Yellow Brick Road, is like when that when the brother when that brother uh, edit that out. Um but like, yeah, you don't you don't leave killers roaming around, you have to go and hunt them down. <laughs> it's like you've just left your wife. Yeah, you alone. don't have to go hunt them down, but <laughs> you should not leave your wife yeah, there. Yeah. And 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 Jennifer Lawrence in this movie is amazing, man. She's so good. Like I, I love her. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of her in general. She's really good in this. She's so believable. And she's terrified. And so would I be. It's like, <laughs> don't leave me. There's, there's some guy just murdered his brother. And you're leaving me all alone. And then they do. And it's complete silence. It's like, you've had all this noise. There's no music in this movie either. Um, it, now is like the first time you notice the silence. And that silence will come again. And I think silence is a really important part of this movie. Um, but yeah, complete silence tension uh, it's uh, i don't know this, this is a great scene for me but anyway on you go so there's a part where blood is dripping well basically it's the spot where she's cleaning up the blood it wears a hole away in the floor and it starts dripping down, it down into the basement where it drips onto the light bulb and explodes and it's the, like corrosive blood yeah it leads to a secret room with a fuel tank in it I only bring it up because it becomes important later. Watching it the second time, uh, I was just not into it. There's a frog that hops out. <laughs> I did. I wrote that down as well. I was like, oh, what did she find? Oh, nothing. A cute toad. We see the killer again. He leaves. She calls 911, doesn't finish the call, and they don't call back, which is... You've said this before, yeah. This, that's this, this, not this. the way it works. So, no, but at the same time, what what does it matter anymore? And I say that because I've given up because it's about to get worse. Better. He means better. No, far worse. Javier returns with, you know, he's just bloody. And he's, there. there's a thing where she says the killer came back and he says, I know. He says this a lot. I know, I know, I know. As though he knows it, as though he's been through it before. I imagine that's going to lead into one of your theories. But I want to point it out that I did notice it. I probably didn't notice it the first time. But the second time... It was blatantly obvious. That's probably about the only thing I got out of the second time that I didn't get out of the first time. There's a whole argument. I think, is this the part where they, he asks her to join him, but he's asleep before she even gets there and he won't wake up. 54 minutes in, even more off the rails. All of a sudden now, many people show up. 
for the week. Yeah, this is where things... I call it party in the kitchen. <laughs> so Pfeiffer doesn't accept her apology, like, I'm so sorry about your son. And there's a whole thing about you can't possibly understand since you're not a mother. There's an incredibly long speech that's given by the poet. More people arrive. Ed can't speak. So he asks Jennifer Lawrence to speak for him, to eulogize for the son that she met for about two seconds while he was fighting with his brother. <laughs> while he was being murdered. Um, yeah, that, that, I mean, that's supposed to be awkward. And you're supposed to think that. You're supposed to be like, what? Why? Why would you even ask her to do that? And she's obviously shocked and doesn't know what to say, as would I. I wouldn't know what to say either, you know? I mean, that's asking too much. And I think that is the point of that scene. You're asking too much of her. Um, we'll get into this at the end. Okay, well, then she has to go put on better clothes. There's a couple in her room, and she drinks more yellow powder. So all this is Jennifer Lawrence doing this. Once she gets out of the bathroom, there are now just people painting her house, which annoys her. Please don't sit on the sink. Please don't sit on the sink. Please don't sit on the sink. Three times in a row, they jump up and down on it stupidly. The sink breaks. The wall breaks. Pipes burst. She screams for everybody to get out. And then people seem to be gone. She's mad. She yells at Javier, it's all about you, I build the house, and you don't write. And, you know, saying that my life didn't turn out well, you talk of kids, but we're not making kids. And then they get passionate, rain on the ceiling, water tends to be symbol of rebirth or something new. Cut to the next scene where she tells us she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. How do you know? I just know. All right, fine. At this point, this is the least of my logic leaps that I need. Okay, I will take it. I will accept it. But there is so many worse things going on here. Javier now is happy. Now he can write. And yeah, which is really a kick in the teeth because she's like, I'm pregnant. And he's like, oh, that's amazing. And then he's like, I need a pen. And he goes and writes. And then she's, she's obviously touched it. He's happy because he's having a kid. And he's like, no, those people last night, their grief, it, it, it's inspired me. Like, and the oh, baby. He does say and the baby. He does say and the baby then, but he generally kind of throws that in as a footnote. Time jumps a lot. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I forgot. She did flush the yellow powder. We should talk about that, I suppose. Yeah. So that's probably important. To me, it's not because nothing here is real anymore. Time jumps. She's got a definite baby bump. I don't know what, six months at this point. Javier is writing. He kind of stands at the, the baby kicks. Uh, Javier is standing at an open front door. He says he's finished with his manuscript. Or his page. <laughs> it doesn't really look like a manuscript, does it? There's an image of him in the burn field outside, like we saw at the beginning. So I'm not sure with all of this. I mean, this is the same thing. The dirty hand, the de-burning of everything. Uh, is this meant to be her seeing reality through his work? Is that what his work is about? I'm not sure what's supposed to be represented here. But she cries and she says it's very real and it's amazing. It's and perfect. At this point, she cries as she asks if she's going to lose him, which seems to come absolutely out of nowhere. He says never. The phone rings. Javier says it's the publisher and they love it. But how in the world did that happen so quickly since he just finished it? Time doesn't that, matter. It has no meaning, yeah. Because she asks him, like, she, even she brings up that point that you just have. She's like, how? And he's like, huh? She, she's read it already? And he's just like, his answer is, of course she has. Like, yeah. The blood spot appears again on the rug, even though it's not possible. She takes a shower, she rubs her belly, she combs her hair, she bakes a cake. Oh, stop. This point, though, did you... <laughs> please, you know, that part, when she opens that duffel bag, and then she opens the other, the, like, the makeup bag in, in, inside, you cannot tell me that does not look like a vagina. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm going to put a picture in, just a still from it. It's like, I just was like, oh, that's pretty obvious. <laughs> it was just hilarious, man. But yeah. Right. Uh, okay, go on. Then. So now she's all, she's, she's more made up now and do kind of dolled up version of her. I guess. Pure her, uh, her, pure her, her pure self from before. Um, but then I was wondering, like, when I got to this bit in the movie, I was wondering, or is this the way that he sees her now? You know, it's like, I was kind of blurring where we were seeing this movie from. Like, because in the beginning of the movie, she's very plain, dresses in white. Um, she doesn't wear a bra or 
underwear in the in the opening. She just wanders around the house very, yeah, very plain, not not made up. But now she's all her hair's up. She's got makeup on, and I was wondering, is it is this because now he sees her as something more sexual in a sense? Now that he's finished his work and he's found, now that he's finished his work and he finds kind of he's found out who he is and whatever, blah 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 blah. Is it? it it's a minor point. It doesn't matter. There's a part here where it just seems like this is not just the house but everything Mm -hmm. and in the beginning it was the house so there's a part of me that if i want to buy into whatever theory you're shooting out now i would say that it's because in the beginning she felt at home and she was at home but now she's not really at home right okay they celebrate and in one because one day every copy gets sold which of course doesn't happen we are now at one hour and 19 minutes and this is where the movie goes flat out bonkers. <laughs> Absolute bananas. A man hits the glass and scares Jennifer Lawrence. There are tons of people outside. We find out they're fans. The blood spot gets worse. She goes back out. Now there's a huge crowd outside. Javier, the poet, wants her to meet all of his fans. She says she's about to have a baby. Isn't that enough? Which seems to be too much at this point, if we're at all based in reality. Obviously, we're Which not. we're not. <laughs> he says, yes, that's enough, but please come. And she says, I want to be alone with you. Which can't be happening right now, apparently. So, the random mother comes in with a boy who pees his pants. Jennifer Lawrence is trying to take him to the bathroom and is going to clean him up. But there's already somebody in the bathroom. And as she leaves the bathroom, there's now magically a long line of people who are complaining about how long the line is. And... <sighs> All right, let me go fast. So, uh, people are like taking food. The publisher agent, I don't know, Kristen Wiig's character, she's called the Herald. I don't know exactly what that means, but she basically comes in with a whole second printing that happened that day magically and basically calls her, uh, calls Jennifer Lawrence the inspiration. Yeah. She also complains that it's really hot in the house. Javier starts doing autographs. There's a whole line. Some lady runs in. She steals a book and a pen. Jennifer Lawrence tries to get them back. They fight uh, over a vase and it breaks. Looters go crazy. They're taking everything. She tries to call 911. A lady hangs up and a man just steals the phone. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, yeah, he told us we could share everything. And he's like, yeah, share. And then he just steals it. I like this home invasion part, man. This part is is really interesting. Um, I love how... There's a there's a bit where there's even a guy that comes in and it's almost like he's selling real estate. He's like, oh, there's this over here. And it's like totally uninvited and it's like selling off parts of the house or selling the house to complete strangers. It's madness. This part is absolute madness. Javier starts marking people with ash in their forehead. Is it ash? I thought it was just ink. Uh, it could be ink. It certainly, to me, looked like basically they're trying to do some sort of religious reference, though. As yeah, oh. this becomes either a religion or a cult of some kind right even if it's not ash i'm pretty sure that's what they're trying to go for is that what it that's what it is supposed to look like yeah i just figured it was ink because he's signing all those copies maybe he spilled an ink pot or something like that and that really doesn't matter because there's absolute chaos about to happen jennifer lawrence is complaining that they're taking things javier says they're just things and then the fans do a dance some sort of ritualistic dance Now you look out the window, there are hordes of fans coming in from outside, using flashlights to get there. She sees the heartbeat, but now the heartbeat of the house has turned to dead ash. Mm. Now she goes down, and the guy who I'll refer to as the lead fan, the first to be there and get a hug from him, is now basically leading all the religious cult stuff and putting marks on people's forehead and saying... The words that Javier used as his eulogy from what I refer to as the kitchen party for Ed Harris's kid. Yeah, that part is interesting. He's like, pin your thoughts on the wall. Um, And the thoughts are just all pictures of the poet. Um, And yeah, he does. He uses the exact words. He says, his words are yours. He marks them. And he's like, he's like the proxy now where he's he's now giving out the mark and assuming the kind of role of the poet. all very symbolic stuff. Jennifer Lawrence packs. She tries to leave the crowded house. A fight breaks out. And uh, there's another dance in the living room. This part was interesting, though, because like it's almost like he takes up the, the, the hype in this movie quite 
well here, I think. Because like, you've still got the music from the... I called it like a religious parade, basically, from before. And you still have that beat and that music, and then the fight breaks out, and then the music slowly, subtly kind of changes into... Um, like nightclub music and then you see it is a nightclub everyone's dancing in the living room downstairs and there's like a line of people now it's gone it's moved from this humble beginning kind of thing into this like almost queuing up to get into a nightclub it's become mainstream i guess is what they were going for here um i like that because it was a really it was a really kind of cool transition for me there's a native american who's ripping boards off the wall i'm assuming of the study he says to prove we were here it feels just really out of place in this movie. But to me, everything kind of feels out of place at this point. Mm. I like that part. The... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, basically everything that you say that you don't like is a reason that I like this movie. Uh, I think that's just going to be the way that it is. There's um, a blood spot is now like a hole. It's now charred. It's not big enough for her to trip in. Javier doesn't want her to leave. There's some sort of special effect we're going to see a lot when she's upset and the whole screen becomes kind of shaky oh, and yeah, blurred yeah, yeah. Uh, she says something about the baby police now come into the house they shove her against the wall javier gets mad pushes the cop they both kind of get pepper sprayed there's a naked man crying in the tub as she tries to clean out her eyes looters are just ripping everything apart now and the cops try to stop it there are also suddenly a lot of women locked in a cage and she wants to help but she can't. There's some man who also shoves her against a wall. He feels in her mouth. Somebody says, how is the angel? He says, tainted. And now SWAT arrives with full-on riot <laughs> yeah. gear. There's also now barrels with fire in them, as though this is a poverty-stricken area. The walls are just being torn apart or are torn apart. Uh, there are people throwing Molotov cocktails at the SWAT team. People are chanting and marching. There are people on the floor who have hoods on their head. The Herald, Kristen Wiig, the agent or publisher or whatever, just shoots them in the head. Yeah. And she also wants to shoot the inspiration. But an explosion saves her. More people enter. Now I think it's soldiers. It's the army, yeah. Jennifer Lawrence is crawling over dead bodies. Javier appears in a gas mask, says he needs to get her somewhere safe. But out is too dangerous. No matter how much she tries to get out, he won't let her out. People plead with the poet for food and water, saying, oh, there he is. He hasn't forsaken us. Where could he have gone? This is a house, right? So again, if this is a house, it makes no sense. The poet promises he will return, but he starts shoving them away. A doctor magically appears. The baby is now almost here, and she's telling her to push. But Javier takes her away even from the doctor they hide in the study baby is born it's a boy she holds the baby the baby cries then all goes quiet here's your all goes quiet moment another one yeah this is the second part where there's no no no, no noise outside the study they've left fruit and water but basically this is one of the slowest parts in this movie where she just wants to wait it out but eventually she's gonna end up falling asleep and then he takes the baby and the baby crowd surfs through the fans and cult members or whatever you want to call them to the point where it leads to a religious sacrifice of some kind. Jennifer Lawrence will find the baby, but not much of it <laughs> as the fans are all now eating it. She freaks out. She starts fighting back. The lead fan who was putting marks on foreheads earlier hits her with that same doorknob and they really start beating her up there, hitting her, kicking her, everything. She finds the lighter that she threw behind a table before and runs downstairs, finds the fuel oil tank. I can't remember, does she open it? Does she hit it? Anyway, it's, she, it's, she hits it with a, a wrench or something like that and breaks it's it open. pulled on the floor. They all try to stop her. She sets it on fire. The whole place goes up. Everybody and burns. And so does outside. <laughs> like, yes. even the outside burns as well, yeah. So everybody burns except for Javier for some reason. So now we get this weird ethereal scene of him carrying her and uh, to the study, right? Mm. And he lays her down. She asks, what are you? He says, I am I. Uh, you are home. He, yeah, like I said, he takes her to the beginning of the movie basically in the study 
He says it won't hurt much longer. She says what hurts was I wasn't enough. He says it never is if I want to create. It is what I do. It's what I must do. I must create because it's who I am. Paraphrasing there. Yeah. And he must try again. So he basically gets her to let go of life so that he can rip her heart out. And inside the heart is the new glass crystal of which he can place and start over again. Woman wakes up. It's a totally different woman. Yeah. End of movie. Now, let me give you some of my my bigger complaints. Well, we'll I be, have we'll more. We've been here for an hour already. I'm just going to give them to you. You can feel free to fight back or just let me have them. You may confront them. And what you say is your one theory, which, by the way, I doubt. But here are my, my things I wrote down. All right. Go for it. One, it's too abstract for me to have any real meaning. For me, this is the type of thing that is a painting that is so abstract that you could really interpret it as anything. The symbols in many ways could be interpreted in many, many different ways. This is art. This for me is not a movie. There's not enough story for me to make this be a movie with a cohesive story. So already that's a problem because that's not the kind of movie I like. I feel like along with that is the idea of people who love it are going to come at me with this, well, if you don't like it, it's just because you don't get it. And I don't think that that's the issue. For me, I think that there's so little here that there's really not that much to get. Now, maybe with your theory, you're going to come at me with something you're going to try to convince me is a great story. I'm going to let you, but I don't think that that's what's going on here. I feel like this is so abstract that you could really interpret it in many ways. This is much like the way people constantly relate revelations in the Bible to current things that are happening because they're kind of abstract symbols that you can attribute in many, many different ways. So already I, I don't like it because I don't feel like there's enough concrete. I don't feel like there's one solid message here. I, yeah, I already said that it's a bit too abstract for a story arc. I still feel that way. I feel like this movie relies too much on symbolism, which I believe we've talked before in another episode for me symbolism is meant to help a story it's not meant to be the story and in this one i feel very much it is meant to be a story for me this movie is not entertaining once i lose reality i i'm totally fine to have bonkers movies but they have to have some sort of rule or some sort of reality to them to help leash me to the story and this one doesn't once the police and the swat and the army come in you've completely lost me there's just nothing for me to grasp onto anymore. And the biggest one, I think, is even if you say this is art, even if you say that it has all these meanings, this movie, it either has no message or what I think is much more likely, it has too many messages. And these messages trip over each other and there are too many things trying to be said so that it never really gets to say anything solid about any one of those. I think that you could easily say that this is about fame, you could say this is about creativity. You could say this about love. You could say this is about um, nostalgia or trying to imagine the past, but in a different way. You could talk about this being trying to hang on to the past in a way that ruins your future. You could talk about it being the sense of home and what is really home and does it have to do with love. To me, it just either has nothing or as I said, more likely, just all of these messages that it just spends so little time on everything that it makes it pointless. I think I would be more impressed if he'd broken this up into five or six or even, I don't know, 10 short films that each conveyed one single message than to do it in this messy, messy way that I just don't get, that doesn't work for me good luck trying to make me think that this is a great movie because I've watched it twice and I liked it a lot less the second time. Go for it. It's your turn. I love how at the beginning you said you want to let me run this. I would have. And you said, <laughs> no, do it sequentially. And I said, okay. Well, I, I, had, it, I had it sequentially in my, in my thing as well. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, man. I'm kind of tired out now. <laughs> um, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Caps filled their more caps created.